So a few years ago, there was an article in Make Magazine that showed you how to build a demonstration of a nuclear fusion reactor, something called a Farnsworth fuser. The fuser works by using high voltage electricity inside of a vacuum chamber to accelerate the fusion material, usually deuterium, all towards the center of the chamber, causing the ions that crash into each other generate a lot of heat and hopefully start the fusion reaction. Now in our case, we're not actually going to be generating any fusion. I'm not putting in nearly enough power to do this, and I'm not using deuterium. What I want to do is create what's called a star in a jar. I just want a bright ball of plasma inside of a vacuum chamber, because I think that'd be cool. already screwed this up. I meant to drill the top plate with a 7 sixteenths and the bottom plate with a half. But I didn't do my math right and realized the 7 sixteenths is smaller than a half and I drilled them both with a half. Well I have an idea but I don't like it. I guess we're just gonna live with it and I'm gonna epoxy in the pressure gauge so that it's just uh, not really threaded in but it's there. Damn. Well, let's tap the one that I didn't screw up. I don't even have a tap handle that fits this damn tap. First steps are going well. Okay, here's the plan. I'm gonna cut whatever amount of threads I can into this half inch hole, even though it's too big for this tap. I think it'll at least get some up here at the long end of this. And then we're just gonna epoxy it in after that and hope to hell that this thing seals. Well, honestly that went better than I expected. Amazingly, there actually are some threads in there. Not as good as the one that's the right size, but uh, maybe it'll work. Okay, back to this disaster. Safety tip, do not store flammables, such as acetone, anywhere near high voltage equipment. bad this is going to be. Well, it might work, except the point where it seals is right in front of the damn hose. It's going to look like this. Better idea. Let's put the gauge on that one and we'll put the hose barb on this one. I'm putting way too much Teflon tape on this because I want it to build up a little bit to fit in that damn 
hole that I drilled too big. Actually seal. It should work, but now we gotta wait 24 hours for the epoxy to dry. We're almost done. Not looking too bad. I think there's hope. All right, we're almost there. We got this thing put together. We've got it hooked up to our vacuum pump here, and we're ready to give it a test. Now, really important safety precaution about playing with vacuum chambers, especially ones made with glass like this. The first time you pull this thing under a vacuum, do not do it out in the open without some kind of protection, because there's a chance that it can implode, and then you'll have glass shards flying everywhere, and you can imagine how bad that would be. So make sure that you put this behind some kind of barrier or in some kind of safety enclosure and make sure you're wearing adequate eye and face protection. Okay, there's its protection. And here's my protection. Let's hope it works. Well, it's time to play everyone's favorite game again called Will It Blow Up or Just Not Work? Or maybe in this case, Implode. Time to find out. Okay. Put on the in. Not too bad. Minus twenty-five. Let's well, run here for a few minutes and see if it's stable. This is not all the pressure this thing I want to take. Let's give the pump a break. Well, it didn't implode. That was the first thing I was worried about. All right, let's try it again. Well, 
on it see what happens all right it's getting serious now I've got the biggest flyback transformer I have connected to my ZVS flyback driver got some DC ripple smoothing capacitors and uh, of course the way this works is the positive terminal connects to the outer plates and the negative terminal connects to the inner grid because we want to pull the positively charged ions that get their electrons ripped off of them all towards the center all right let's fire it up all right will it blow up or just not work round two this really is. I think, uh, I think we can live without the safety barrier now. Watch me say that and then it blow up. The grid's too big and it's too close to the bottom plate. Well, I've been messing around with this a lot. I've been trying smaller grids. I put in an outer grid. I put in an insulator on the bottom to keep the keep it from arcing over on the bottom, but I can't really seem to get this thing to work. You can see from the voltage on that. Uh, that right there is about all we get. It's, uh, I think the pressure just isn't low enough. The lowest I can seem to get it to, if you look at the gauge up here, it's about minus 26 inches of mercury. Or uh, roughly around uh, 104. I think I need to get down to more like 10 tour to do this. And so, unfortunately, this doesn't quite work. It's kind of an interesting effect there, but uh, it's not at all what I want. Well, I think we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board with this one. Uh, it's not quite. It's not quite achieving what we want. I think what it comes down to is the pressure just won't get low enough to uh, get it into the state that it needs to. I tried all kinds of different things. I tried, we started with the big grid and it was just arcing to the grid and it was even arcing to the bottom. So I thought, okay, let's put this insulator in here. I just took another piece of uh, the rubber gasket and put that in there. That stopped it from arcing to the bottom, but you see what it does, it just still kind of arcs directly to the grid. Thought, okay, let's try a smaller grid, so I made this one, and uh, it's basically the same thing. I get a little bit of glow around the grid, but it doesn't actually, uh, it doesn't actually 
get any sort of plasma ball in the middle. And then finally I thought, all right, you know what? Let's make the separation even larger. And I went with this really tiny little grid that I made here now. And uh, I experimented with and without with all of these on having this outer grid in here and none of it makes a difference. I think it really just comes down to we're not able to pull high enough vacuum. And it could be a number of things as to why that's the case. The design of this vacuum chamber really isn't the best. It uses these rubber seals. This uses this kind of rubber called Viton, which is meant to have low outgassing if it's used in a vacuum, but it's still not perfect. There's, you know, epoxy on these things. It's, uh, there's this ceramic uh, feed through, which is epoxied in. All of those could have leaks and not let me pull as high of a vacuum as I really need to. Or, ultimately, it could just be uh, my cheap Chinese vacuum pump that I got for only a few hundred bucks is uh, not really up to the spec that it claims to be and it's not really able to pull as high of a vacuum as I need it to. This is uh, it's the first time I've tried any sort of vacuum chamber thing like this. I really don't have experience making vacuum chambers, and so I'm honestly not that surprised I didn't get it right the first time. Spent hours messing with this thing. My, uh, my poor flyback transformer has really been getting a workout. I kind of burned through the uh, insulation around its high-voltage rectifier there. You can see... That poor high voltage diode in there got really really hot and melted the insulation around it so it still works but uh, it really got to work out so lesson learned is we need better vacuum equipment and a better vacuum chamber design I think hmm. well that uh, didn't quite work out did it I'll be honest, I've uh, been thinking about it and was thinking, do I even want to upload this video? Do I really want to show something that just flat out failed and didn't work? You know, I put a lot of work into this thing and it uh, basically did nothing. I learned a lot. I think I understand now what's going wrong. I, I got to think more about how to fix it, how to improve it, how to make it actually work. I might need to scrap this whole thing and start over. Um, but, uh, you know, as much as it seems weird to upload a, a video to YouTube that was of something that didn't work, especially as a, you know, a tech person that builds things and I want to show projects and I want to show high voltage technology and how things work but you know I thought about something and this is something I thought about since I started this channel which is we don't do fake on this channel that's something I got from one of my YouTube heroes photonic induction which by the way if you guys haven't seen photonic induction you should definitely go check his channel out He's one of the main reasons I'm even doing this. He's one of the biggest inspirations uh, that I've had. And that's something he used to always say, was, we don't do fake on this channel. And that's something that I thought from the beginning. I said, that's exactly how I'm going to run this. Everything we're going to do is going to be real. There's no special effects, no, uh, you know, nothing that isn't exactly how you see it in real life. And I thought, you know what? That's not just a saying about doing YouTube. It's a saying about engineering and just life in general. Most things don't just work the first time, especially if you don't have a lot of experience doing them. You know, most engineering projects and things that you build, there's no way you get the first prototype right. There's always things that are wrong. There's always things that need to be changed. It never works the first time. And that's all a part of real life. But for some reason, we have this, this feeling that compels us to not want to share failure. We always want to just show the perfect, well-done end result that works perfectly, makes you look flawless, makes you look so smart, and you did everything right, and you know exactly what you're doing. And 
you know, I thought about not wanting to upload this video, and I thought, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna show something that failed, because that's real. That's not fake. That's a part of how things really work. And, uh, you know, it, it's... I'm, I'm putting myself out there at the risk of getting a lot of criticism for this, I feel like, because there are people who know much more about this kind of thing than I do, building vacuum chambers and fusers and such like this. And I welcome feedback. If anybody has suggestions on what they think is going wrong, is it my vacuum pump just isn't good enough? Is the design of the vacuum chamber bad? If anybody has any thoughts on those, please share them. You know, but I, I feel like I'm opening myself up to a lot of uh, criticism here where people are going to say, Oh, well, if you just did this one thing this one way, it would have worked perfectly. Why don't you research what you're doing better? Why don't you, you know, get better parts and better equipment? And, you know, yeah, I, I need to learn better and I need to do better. But nobody coming into something like this that they've never done before gets it right the first time. And, you know, of course, I could make the way that I run this channel as you only see the polished, finished product projects and things that only worked out perfectly, but that's not the actual process. That's not what actually happens. If you really want to see what's going on, you know, things that I do aren't going to work every time. That's reality. And so I think it's actually better to show that because, like I said, we don't do fake on this channel. You want to see something real? You want to see something that doesn't really work? Well, here it is. You know, I, uh, I'm, I'm willing to put myself out there as a person who will post videos of failures. And uh, I think that that's actually a good thing. I think that that's something that is... Something people need to be able to know how to do is show themselves failing at something. Because, you know beyond things like this. I think that's something most people are afraid to do. I think they're really afraid to show themselves in a vulnerable position in a place where they fail. And, you know, of course you want to you want to be smart, you want to know what you're doing, and you want to, you know, actually do things right. But that's not reality to say that you get it right the first time. Anyway, I'm rambling here about all of this, but... Uh, I decided, you know what, screw it, we're gonna post this video anyway. If people hate me for it, I don't care. I, I think that there are genuinely a lot of people out there who will see this and appreciate the fact that I'm willing to be honest about showing myself failing at something. And, you know, hopefully I can help people who are, are perhaps struggling with that in their own minds about something else that they're doing and being worried about not showing themselves achieving something perfect and showing that they are the expert and know exactly what's going on. I, I, I hope that this is helpful to, to somebody. Anyway, we got a lot more projects to work on and I promise some of them will work. So, see you guys next time.